All right, we're live. How's it going, Jim? It's going good. <laughs> How are you, Tim? I'm doing good. good see you. Yeah, hanging out in the living room together. <laughs> yeah, we've been waiting for this moment. It's good to be back in America, frankly. <laughs> Does it feel like everything you ever thought it would be? Even better. Yeah. They so... really do have gold on the streets here. <laughs> Well, so you're on the robot, and if you've got controls of the robot, I actually want you to roll into my camera shot so people can get a sense of like how I'm able to talk to you right now because it's pretty. Oh, I have control, people. You have control. <laughs> Without I have a doubt. Control. <laughs> yeah. I don't have control over personal space. Should I yeah, turn my so... robot? Yeah, yeah. Turn over, and you'll be able to see the camera shot there, and then. <laughs> It's good to be home in the, in the living room. Hello. Yeah, so the stream could hear, see this. I actually put a little face mask on you. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome <laughs> and strange. <laughs> it's strange. Um, but since you're not actually here, I think I can take this off so we can get a little bit more. Yeah, we can get a little yes. more intimate now. That's right. That's right. This, that's the beauty of things being virtual, right? Yes, so I think so. So you're on the robot. You're going to go back over there. But obviously, you've got your green screen hooked up. And this was something that we've talked about on previous streams about being able to use your green screen as a way to like have a sense of presence, which I think is pretty wild. So Exactly. So yeah, we're, we're both in the living room, so to speak. But it's really just the composite of you and I in front of the the living room shot and yeah am, am I out am I out of the out of the scene you are yeah absolutely I'm yeah gonna park this baby park it <laughs> this so, is so fun it is fun right like I think it's kind of interesting to think about like you know like we talked about that sense of presence and how you know, it, it can it can be fun for people there, but it's also really uh, intimate. It's a funny word, but it is in some ways like the ability yeah. for me to kind of just hang out and talk with you and have you on a robot, which might seem creepy at first. But then it becomes like, wow, this is a different way of conversing with someone. Yeah, it's funny because this morning when you and I chatted, which was the kind of genesis for this. Um, Reclaim Today episode, mm -hmm. I came in by robot. You're like, I set up the robot. It's like, hey, I want to run an idea by you. Right. And I was like, oh, okay, jump in the robot. But just sitting here looking at you yeah, and talking. And this morning, the same was really uh, special. It's like, it's very different. Yeah. But let's go, let's do a little bit of a rewind for this episode. <laughs> yeah. Context, because... Just yesterday, um, you and I had a discussion where we were bemoaning a little bit the fact that, you know, between COVID-19 and, you know, the uncertain future for a project that we were really excited about a year ago, six mm -hmm. months ago, right. that's been on pause somewhat indefinitely and with the sign that things may not get better, like we kind of came away from the meeting like maybe we'll try and do something, but it won't be what our real vision was. Mm -hmm. And I think we came we came away from it knowing that we want to do it. But between me being here, no prospect of coming back, you being there, no prospect of it opening. Right. We felt a little bit like, where is this leading? But kind of, kind of know, discouraged, kind of right? <laughs> yeah. But then I, this one seems like you had an epiphany and now I'm fully on board. Yeah. Um, but what was that epiphany, Tim? I mean, you know, uh, obviously, one of the things you said early on, uh, the virus sucks. Like, you know, coronavirus hit and, you know, we were all kind of depressed. We've had our moment for several months. I got back in and I was like, well, I'll start getting things set up in the space. But it, it's month after month continued to feel like, when is this going to go away, especially for the U.S.? And um, yeah, it, and it can be depressing. And, you know, as as you're kind of figuring out your long term plans of kind of like, like, when are we going to open? What can we do? One thing that you said early on was, what if we like double down on the idea of the virus? And, you know, like we like everybody has to wear a hazmat suit, like full body, you know, in order to get in and, you know, which 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 would be funny, but nobody wants to really do that. Like, it's just kind of all in, in jest a little bit. But today, so this morning, I found 
a website that we're going to show on the stream. Uh, it's called Telemelt. Um, and the idea behind it is tuna real melt? tuna melt. <laughs> Make yourself a fancy tuna melt. Um, and the idea behind it is pretty simple. Um, it It's to uh, the ability to play old school arcade games like emulator style, like you've been doing with the RetroPie and stuff like that on a website and have a low latency way for you to pass the controller to other people and play. And so the idea being that you can play games together even when you're remote. The guy who built it, his name's Andy Ra Andy Raitano. Um, he goes by Batsley Adams uh, on Twitter and other places. And he worked with some other people, started developing this around March when things started hitting as an idea for people to be able to remotely play games together, collaborate together, and do like really interesting stuff. And so I was like, oh man, at first I was just like, well, that's fun. I mean, that's right up our alley. Let's definitely play around with that and play games. And then it suddenly hit me. I'm like, what if that's like a context for the arcade is how might an arcade open that could allow people to come in remotely, which is not necessarily a new idea. You've been playing around with it with the video store you know, with yeah. the robots and things like that. But I got to thinking, we have the robot, now we have a way to play games remotely. And suddenly you start to think about what if you have small groups of people that are in the space collaborating and bringing in people externally? I mean, we have people in our community that have said like, oh, I'd love to come and see the arcade. And they're all the way up in Canada. And who knows if they'll ever get a chance to actually come to the space. And yet you're here. And in some ways, hopefully it feels like you're actually here in the space with me. And if there's ways for us to marry that with the idea of social gaming, I think it's really interesting. The idea that people could ha sit in the living room and bring in someone remotely that's also in the living room. And then you could pull up a game on the TV and the people who are remote can play that game and you're seeing it live. So. And I think what hit me when you were saying this this morning and why I was so sold on it was the fact that I was sitting there looking at you talking and then we played with Telemelt mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, wait, so there's a different element of me being in the room with you, talking, seeing you through the robot, but then also playing collaboratively, collaboratively on the browser. Yeah, it was it was unique. I it mean. Presence is interesting, and I think yeah. that's what we're exploring here, and we are treating it that, but the way in which then, like, how do you take what we're going to show people with the NES in a little bit mm -hmm. onto some of the actual cabinets, right? Sure. Like us playing, you know, Robotron right. or <laughs> Smash TV or Pac-Man or what have you. It's just, it's a cool experiment to see if we can actually make something work. Yeah, let's look at Tuna Melt and actually give a, a show yeah. people what that's about because you've already joined in here. So I'll switch this shot so that people yes. can get a sense of what this looks like. And so if you go to tunamelt.com and you you go forward, it gives you a unique URL that you can send to other people. And so I sent this URL to you ahead of time. You're connected in here. And so down at the bottom, it actually says you're holding the controller but I'm connected as well. You get to pick a three letter name, uh, which works really well for you and I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, and uh, an emoji. And so you can actually pass the controller back and forth and you can load games in there. And so we'll load and it supports Nintendo Entertainment System, Super Nintendo, uh, Jet, Sega Genesis, and all of the various like Sega Master System, those kind of things, Game Boy Advance and regular Game Boy. Um, and I think that might, I think that covers it for now anyway. And so, and those, to be clear, those are ROMs. You download a ROM. I mean, we don't need to get into it, but you can find them all over the web and download, download those game files. And then you upload the file via Dropbox on here. So there's a button down here to open up Dropbox and load a game in. And yeah. it's, it's pretty sick. And so like, do you want to load a game or do you want me to? It, either way yeah, should work. To, maybe we should start with the, with the classic Mario. Yeah, absolutely. And I actually so and to be clear, this also supports game controller. So I went I ran home and grabbed a PlayStation 4 controller, which I've got with me and just have it plugged into the computer. You're doing similar with an Xbox controller. I am. So yeah. 
I did order on Amazon. They you can buy like for real cheap, like a five pack of all the various classic controllers, but they're USB. So like the actual standard Nintendo controller, Super Nintendo with the with the same buttons and everything. So I felt like you know eventually I want to get to there with it. But it was um, like a pie. It was like a Raspberry Pi set. It was really like Velos. It was nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's meant to work with like the Retro Pie that you created. Or not that you created, but that you built for yourself too. I wish I created. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it'll work with any controller you know that you have plugged in with USB. So I'm gonna go in here. Let's see. I gotta find my mouse. Um, and hit Dropbox. That's the thing about this. I think as yep. you're doing that, is it's super easy. Like. My RetroPie, I have to really finesse my controllers and figure this like this. I plug mm -hmm. my controller in, it works. I load a ROM from Dropbox, it works. Mm -hmm. Like the thing about this idea of game emulation in the browser that's shared yeah. is really slick and right. works right quite well, which makes this idea doable. Exactly. I've got a folder in my Dropbox called ROMs and I just downloaded a few. These are all... Um, the Nintendo Entertainment System, the original Nintendo. Um, sure. So I'll select Super Mario Brothers, and yeah. So you should. I'll make this full screen again. You should be seeing the same thing I do, which is the start screen of Super Mario Brothers. I do, and yeah. I see a little thing underneath that has your name highlighted and mine next to it. Yeah. And so I know that it's your turn. Right. So, so I. So the idea, uh, yeah, and that that we should make clear. The person who built this, his idea around it was that instead of having multiple people on multiple controllers had that there's a sense of social gaming in which you play single player games but you pass the controller back and forth and so that's how this works is that instead of playing a two-player game we're going to play a single player game but i might play a level and then i might say all right jim now you try and we can in the controls just hit the space bar in here and now you've got the controls you know and back and yeah. forth so it's kind of a a different take on it there's a little sound I think maybe they've heard like absolutely <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's kind of cool exactly so let's uh let's start a game here we'll start a one player game and I'll start out and see how long I last you'll last longer than me <laughs> well I I did find that the controller does make it a lot easier <laughs> so uh you know it... so so you know as Tim's playing he's focusing because he needs to focus like, Focus. I can see everything on my browser he's doing, and oh. there's chasing, which is really amazing. Oh. And as I take this over now, so I'm going to hit spacebar. Yep. And I'm going to now go. <laughs> okay, there we go. Whoop. Is that me moving? Yeah. You have to park the robot. The controller is moving the... The robot. Also the robot. <laughs> but anyway, I, that's so weird. The controller, I guess... Oh, I'm gonna, shit. Oh, I'm going to run into the... <laughs> All right, so we've learned something here, which is that you should park the robot. You should... Yeah. Holy <laughs> and maybe park the robot before you play it next time. I did park it. It came out of park. Oh. <laughs> so, some bugs to be worked out there. People watching the stream have no idea what was going on. <laughs> but <laughs> all right. That's cool though. That they have no idea. This. Oh. Oh. Ready for this? Ooh. I'm ready, yeah. Yeah. Alright, let's see if I what I can do on the flag. Oh <laughs> I missed it. There we go. Did you do as bad as I did that time? Well I found the button in which you can run faster, so that definitely helps, but I missed the jump, <laughs> so I fell to the ground, so. All right, so we'll switch back over to you now. Oh wait, you well, jumped I'm out of the website. It. Wait, I, I'm loading it in Safari, and now. Oh okay. Oh. So let's see if it works. Well, let me make sure we don't die here, but then I'll pass it off oh, to yeah. you. 
So you know what? For some reason in Safari, because I didn't want to have to do the, have the same problem in Chrome. Mm -hmm. So if you play, play the game for a bit. Okay. I'm gonna try something. Hold on one second. I'm not as good as other Twitch streamers that can talk and play at the same time. <laughs> this is this is quite the challenge. All right, let's okay, see. I'm jumping out of the robot for a quick second. Right, I gotta remember what the buttons are on this too. All right, so now this I remember. Let's see, and then he go up there. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Let's see if this works. That's a game hack for all you uh all you youngins here. That's pretty cool that you went up above. Oh no 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 no. <laughs> oh. Okay. And then I, I died. It might move again. Let's see. Okay. If it moves again. Oh well, actually the game's over. But let's yeah. do another one just to see if my if my robot moves. Okay. You ready? No. And let me. No, I can't park here. No, you're parked. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> it's it still trying to, to move. move right? Yeah. It's interesting. It's treating the the. You know why? Because it's the cursor. So switch it over to you. See how easy that is? Yeah. You can just take it over. It's that easy. <laughs> it's that easy. All right. I'm not screwing around now. We're going to get a good game in. Get my coin action. Oh! <laughs> There it is. Wow. Nailed that one. You really, how did you do it? How do you jump to get all the way up there? Well, so on my PlayStation controller, I've got X and O, which are the B and A. And if you hold down X while you're moving, you move faster. So let me kill them. So like this is normal running speed. If I'm holding B down, that's the speed. So you can get a head start running faster. Exactly. All right. There we go. Come up here. So running start, get up there. Yeah, so you can go faster like that versus that's the normal speed. Exactly. Let's All right. just see something. All right. Now I'm gonna... I gotta make it back up. Yeah, there we go. Oh, warping off. All right. Are you going to go to four again? Yeah. I don't have a chance at four. <laughs> Take it. Okay, here. I'm going to try. I, I set you up for success. You've got the uh, shooter guy. Whatever they call okay. that version of Mario. Nice. Yeah. So, nice. see. That is awesome. I should have gotten that guy. Oh. oh. That's going to make it more difficult. So this is me playing. Yeah. You were playing, now I'm playing seamlessly. Do you understand how radical this is, people? Can you understand the vertical and the horizontal? <laughs> and you got the robot to stop moving, too. I did. I had to take out the, uh, the Xbox controller. Oh, you're just using your keyboard? Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. As you can see, I'm not trying to get through. I don't have any hope to find any... I don't know. You're doing better on the keyboard. I am. Woo! <laughs> 400. Take it over. <laughs> you know, I finished a level. So I got that going for me. So I said, hey, llama. You know, <laughs> my little something for the episode. So then I say... <laughs> I says to the guy. That's sick. All right. I'm gonna jump in here. Yes. Ooh. Yes, Tim. Yes. Oh wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let's see if I remember another thing here. Oh, <laughs> oh beautiful. Look at you. I tell you, this is Did like right. For the last two hours. It's like riding a bike. This is the. So cool. 
Instead of like learn, instead of learning the hard sciences, this is the kind of stuff that I chose to keep in my brain. I remember I got this the NES in like '85 or '86, and I'd still been an Atari 2600 kind of like hardcore guy. But I was in like 10th or 11th grade, and I was reading it back in this new, we had moved houses, and we were, I was in a new house, and I was reading Macbeth, and between scenes of Macbeth, I would play Mario, like this Super Mario, and so I always have Macbeth and Super Mario Brothers, like, in one thing in my mind, and I, yeah. like, this game is amazing. Yeah. Like, I was really blown away by it, but... I don't, I'm trying to think, I don't think we ever... I don't think we ever actually owned a Nintendo. I I knew people who had them, and so like spent a lot of time at other yeah. people's houses <laughs> playing it. Um, yeah. Look at that, another warp zone. Like summer of '85, or uh, no, the wind, the the Christmas of '84, '85. Yeah. And it kind of blew up. It gave the whole gaming industry a whole new, you know, lease on life after the whole. Atari era and the uh, arcade machine, co-op machines were kind of dead in the water. So good. Look Ooh! Oh, shit! <laughs> I had it going. You blew it. Now I was doing I'm much better. Alright, let's see what you can do. Oh. <laughs> let's see what I can do. Nothing! Go, Tim. Okay. Oh. Well, at least I'm small. That'll help here. <laughs> Let's get small, Timmy boy. This is so cool. But, like, literally, like, while you're playing, I'll just say a little like that. But watching you play like this and knowing there's no latency, there's no issues, and then I can take over the game with a, yeah. with a click. Now, show them the things that we have accumulated some like points. So if you start playing, I can go into my like ghost. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like change things. So yeah, if I, I have to switch to you and then, although I'm not seeing it yet, do you need to start playing or maybe, oh, I think it's only supported in certain games. What game were we playing, Contra? We were playing Contra when we were Contra, playing around with that's it. That's right. So let's load that in here. Yeah. So let's try Contra. Yeah. I, I may not. This is awesome. <laughs> if I didn't download it, I'll grab it real quick. Yeah, I don't think I did. Um, ROM download. <laughs> I didn't see it in Blades of Steel either. But a couple oh. of things while Tim's doing that. The yeah. full screen mode in this is really elegant. So you can take your browser, make it full screen. And the way I'm set up here in Italy, I got one screen with the full screen of Mario and then another screen with Tim, but I'm looking at him in a separate browser with the, with the robot. So when I'm looking this way, I'm really looking at Tim. Yeah. And then when I'm looking straight on, I'm looking at my browser with it. And so it really feels real. Like that's another thing. It feels official. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah, so now we've got the ghost in here. It's down in here in the bottom right. Yeah. And if I click it, let's let's switch to you and you can start playing. And it's okay. gathering gold or whatever in here. Uh, this was something called NES Spectre or any Spectre or whatever. Um, same developer who built this. And the idea behind it was that you could play around with how the game works while the other person's playing. So let's say like corrupt the palette cycle, background palette. Uh, you saw the rocks just change. Yeah. Randomize spread gun. I'll give you a better gun there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so people who are viewing while they're playing the game, someone else is playing the game, they can interact with the game too by like adding different elements. Now I can pass this on, and then I can do something. All right. Ooh, okay, so I'll pass it to you. Okay. Uh, let's see. And then I'm going in. I gotta, I gotta figure out what the controls are. <laughs> it's, oh yeah, for that one, yeah. 
Uh, Luckily, right. it's not a quarter per game. Yeah, exactly. Alright, jumping and shooting. Easy enough. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and it's interesting because you accumulate the dollars or whatever by just staying in the game. So I'll do the correct uh, color palette. Like, nice. I love that one. That blinking one in the water. And then I'm going to corrupt sound register. Let's see. Not hearing the sound register corruption. But I'm going to give you the spread gun here shortly. Oh, nice. Yeah. Like good. that. That's like I can do that is good. favor. That's so cool. See, we're, we're friends. Give me Ooh. the spread gun. I died. Uh-oh. All right, you try. You try playing for a little bit. All right, thank you, Tim. I You're welcome. It. I'm dead. <laughs> Hi, Tim. I I died. <laughs> that was, uh, hold on. I'm not. I'm not giving up that. Ooh, let's take this. Yeah. I love the way you can jump in this game. It makes you feel really athletic. Mm -hmm. Turn the audio down a little bit here. Oh, died. Back to you. Back to me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh oh. Nice. Contra is not one that I played all that much. Yeah, it's 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 nah. a strange one. They they have an arcade game of it too. We yeah. played it in Utah. So let's so I'm gonna do it on my side. Okay. Let's do I'm gonna now load to get out of this. So how do I get out of the game? I gotta get out of the Spectre. Um I think Yeah, get out of Spectre and then just hit Dropbox down at the bottom and load a different one. So how do you get out of Spectre? Uh, one of the buttons oh, there is it exit. Is. Yep. Spec Got it. Yeah. So now I'm going to go to Dropbox and I'm going to load my favorite NES game, Blades of Steel, mm. which is a 1986, I think, um, hockey game. <laughs> it is so fun. I love this game. This was Konami. my promise. In the yeah. And there's a really cool thing between... Okay, hold on. Okay, so I got to actually play. So... Let's do this. Oh wait, right I gotta now give, I got to give you controls, right? Or no? Or, or I should take go. control. Yeah. Take control. Yep. There we go. So here we go. Player one. This is one of the games where you could actually fight the opponent, and like you, they showed you the fight. Like hockey and fight. I was always Chicago. <laughs> yeah, I was always Chicago versus Edmonton for some reason. The computer was Edmonton, and I was Chicago. Uh -huh. Why I don't know. It's not like I'm a I'm a hockey fan. <laughs> but and come, like the whole thing is great like the crowd and it's pretty good graphics this is 86 yeah and it's got a game within a game so it's got like a little uh i don't think we want to spend 20 minutes to watch me get to it but like it is kind of interesting how the game is cool i'll show it a little bit mm -hmm. see if i can score a goal and then we can step out and talk a little bit more there we go Ooh, i'm the red you're right. I shot from mid court. <laughs> Not a good idea. They immediately oh, took your it. puck. <laughs> they immediately took my puck, but that's oh, and they tried to shoot on me. Oh, and they oh, scored. Bastards. Are those Canadians that you're playing? Yeah, Edmonton. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and Marie Scott right now, I think is explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> is right where this Edmonton Oilers are. <laughs> She's the okay. goalie. <laughs> She's the goalie, exactly. Yeah. Ready? God damn it, I did it again. Just give it a okay. hand it to him. I'm on handed silver it platter. Hold on, hold on. It's just. Oh, oh, yes! Oh, nice. Oh, okay. I'm doing the wrong button. Oh. Hold on. 
It was easier definitely with the controller, but that's all right. I've got a... That's it, I got the pass. Oh! You see that, Timmy? I was so close to greatness. Oh! Come on! Oh! Oh! Uh. <laughs> you put on me again, the Canadians. And look at them know. celebrating in my court. Like, right yeah. down by me. Like, you suck. That's a... That's definitely a pre-COVID crowd up in the uh, in the stands there <laughs> for sure. I mean, that's got to be a little be... bit of shock. See? Yeah, yeah, I'm I mean, like having palpitations. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. One more. If I get a goal, we can quit. But otherwise, you have to all suffer through this. With, <laughs> with the pass. Oh, so close. I love that he says with the pass. With the pass. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh! oh! You made a shot. Uh, didn't get in. <laughs> made a couple, too. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Oh, there's the fight. Show you, ready? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that awesome? And then I get it. And I can <laughs> do what I want. <laughs> it's like a little, like, super punch out kind of situation in the exactly. middle of the. <laughs> Best. This, this game is like my favorite NES game, and I love Mario, but or I love the idea of Mario, but this is the best game. Edmonton is kind of oh. like they're like Hulk people too. They're all yeah, green. They're good. Yeah, they're good. Come on, I can get this. Ah. Oh. All right. Oh, and I'm leaving it wide open for them. Canadians. Oh, Ooh, there nice. we go. Okay. My last chance. If I don't, we're still getting out of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh all right. you were set up. I was set up. Okay, but I won't sit and <laughs> make you watch me play oh. this. It's super cool. It is super freaking cool to play that together. Yeah. And I don't want to be indulgent on the stream, but we could just sit around and do that, right? right. Yeah, no, exactly. And I think obviously we got to figure out how to stop the robot from moving with your controllers and that kind of thing. But I think, yeah, like, ultimately, yeah, like, the idea behind, like, social gameplay like this, where you have a sense of presence and you're in a space together by robot and through the web and stuff like that, I just, I think it's worth exploring more. And I really liked your idea when we were talking this morning about, you know, what would it mean to do this? Like, you know, um, Andy Rettiano did for NES and for those, like, right. You know, it's similar again to the Internet Archive and emulation, but the emulation in the browser is working so smoothly now. Mm -hmm. So what if you can get that to work with a machine we have in Reclaim Arcade? Right. And so someone comes, like you said, with the robot, there's a QR code that they scan, and then they're able to play that Pac-Man. Yeah. And it's being played in the space, but it's also being shared online with them and someone else who's in the space or someone else all together. Right. And they're trading who has the controls to that game. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I, I, I think it's super cool. And it gets it like we always joked about, oh, the robot needs to have hands. But the, if the web is your hands in that sense, exactly. and you've got a way to like work together in that sense, I think it could be super cool and allow the sense of like bringing people in when you can't necessarily be in person. And it's I think it's a unique idea. I don't know of any other people playing around with this. Uh, there's one group that I've I've followed some of the work they're doing called Surrogate TV. Um, Surrogate TV is a website where they're taking physical things and connecting them to the web. So like they have two yeah. pinball machines that you can play online. But the problem is the latency. Like by the time you yes. press the button for a flipper, like it's like a good half second to second delay. They're over in the Netherlands. So like that's part of it. But that's where it kind of starts to fall apart with the physical. I think if you can fix the latency issue, which clearly like the telemelt thing has already done it has. In, in many ways, then it's like if you can solve that, then you can have real time exploration of playing physical objects remotely, which I think is wild. So. Which is for us now the, the project of Reclaim Arcade, which is exactly. super fun. Yeah, totally. In addition yeah. to like, you know, the playing the VHS and all that, the video stuff that we, it just builds on what we've already been doing. And I think it's right in line with that kind of 
with that that aesthetic that we're going for and it's 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 the perfect time to be doing it in some ways and we were kind of prescient just because you were in italy we wanted to have a robot controlling a video store and now it's like yeah but what if you've got robots controlling the games and running the arcade and doing things like that you know i think it could be yeah. wild so it's our armor against covid despair that's right <laughs> so yeah it's a lot of fun i i'm having a blast with it so yeah yeah I cool. agree. Well, that's cool. I think that 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 covers it, man. That's pretty yeah, awesome. Absolutely. And, you know, once we have more updates to come on it, we'll do another episode about it. I think it it's we'll have to play some more games. I'll have to look at I was a big Sega Genesis person. I had yeah. I got a Game Gear for Christmas. And so, like, I was on the handheld Genesis stuff, like Sonic the Hedgehog, those kind of things. I never owned a Nintendo, but I had the Game Gear. And I got the knockoff Genesis, the Sega Master System, <laughs> because you could yeah. rent the Master System games at the local uh, video store for pretty cheap. And so I would play those games on there. So that's that's my jam, for sure. Yeah, and that's cool, too, because that's a system I don't know. Yeah. So to play on this with you... Mm -hmm. would be like for you a bit your ability to almost seamlessly teach me yeah right yeah. like with the blades of steel like something right. you hadn't seen but like you get to see something new and like someone who does experience it like that's a key part of that because we do feel present exactly i feel like i'm with you we're talking i'm looking at the browser but i hear you laughing or right. like what the hell with the boxing like that's everything and that's what the the person who developed telemount wanted mm -hmm. and missed yeah so i really believe in that vision that's super cool i do too and this whole setup is fun like i think this is one of the cooler streams we've done with us both being in the living room and online and that kind of thing so i'm excited we'll definitely it's have to coming play together it. we yeah. never have a real plan but it always seems to come together which i love <laughs> yeah exactly. it's always a success in our own eyes <laughs> <So>. <laughs> we're always the best people we yes know. that's right we are we are winning in our own minds well <laughs> Thanks, folks who are watching live and people who catch it after the fact. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see y'all later. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.